Hey everyone, Wags here from Eagle Dynamics. In the next open beta update, we'll be adding many new features to the Viper. In this video, we'll go over the more visible items, but please consult the changelog for the full list once released. One of the biggest items in the update will be the tuning of the G onset and instantaneous turn rate, or ITR. These have been adjusted to better match public data, and we feel more accurately depicts the performance of the Viper. Please note though that you can't simply pull 9G in any situation. It is highly dependent on your gross weight, drag index, altitude, airspeed, and more. To provide an impartial view on these changes, we invite you to check out Growling Sidewinder's video on these changes. Okay, let's start talking about the more visible changes coming to this update. Okay, so the first item we'll take a look at is that before when you took off and you had gear and flaps up, there'd be a bit of a uh, pitching up moment on the nose, which we've addressed. So let's take a look at this in action. Nose will steering on. Come up to about 12 degrees, set it there, gear up, and you can see the uh, gun bore sight line just about where we want it to be. Uh, naturally, the uh, flight path marker will rise. Okay, let's take a look at the next item. So, if we go ahead and go to uh, dogfight mode, we'll go to bore sight by going Timus forward, and if we slew now we put ourselves into the slew mode we look over on the hemix we now just have the uh, hemix aiming cross whereas before we'd have the ellipse indicating a bore sight now speaking of acm modes if we lock up a target we now get the lock message and again this is only an acm mode with an stt lock in this update, we've also added a new ability to designate in DTOS mode. Simply slew where you want to put it, and now you can press the weapon release button to designate at that location. We've also added three 500 pound class training bombs. Uh, these include the BDU 50 HD or the high drag, the BDU 50 LD low drag, and the BDU 50 LGB, which is the laser guided bomb version. We've also seen the final, the mark point options, and that's the overfly options. So, to do that, we're going to go to air to air master mode. Up on the ICP, we're going to go to button 7, mark. On the DED, we see we're in mark overfly to steer point 26. So with an overfly, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go Teamus forward or target management switch forward uh, to set the mark point overfly to where we actually are flying over right now. So I'm gonna bring up the HSD as well. So Teamus forward, and now we've dropped a mark point at that location. We zoom on in to the HSD, Scale down, we can see a yellow cross indicating the overfly mark point that we had just dropped. Uh, also, we've uh, addressed the issue where sometimes the mark points on the HSD would drift and that's no longer an issue. So for this update, uh, perhaps the biggest change are gonna be the additions of new data link options. Uh, the first of which we'll talk about is the ability to send a mark point uh, slash steer point. To do that, Let's come down here to our HSD, and we're gonna make that our sensor of interest or SOI soy. So we have a white box around it. We're gonna go uh, transmit off to transmit link 16. And now we can select any of our steer points that we'll uh, send to our members. So let's go to say steer point two. And now to send it over the data link, I'm simply going to press the comm switch on the throttle 
to the right greater than 0.5 seconds. We do that, we can see that it reversed highlighted, indicating that it sent the message. So if I was on the receiving end, I would hear data, and then on the HUD, I would see abbreviation for mark point, and then the number of the steer point it was assigned to in my database. So even though I sent steer point two on my end, it will appear anywhere between steer point 71 on, and 80 on their end. Also on their end, they'll have a large cross indicating the location of the sent steer point. Now, in addition to sending mark points, we can also send and receive a sensor point of interest or a SPI. And it doesn't really matter what generates the SPI. It could be the targeting pod. It could be the air to ground radar. Uh, SPI is a SPI is a SPI. So let's go to air to ground master mode. On the SMIS, I'm going to go to CCRP so I can slew around the targeting pod. HSD, link 16, transmit. Bring out my TGP. Yeah, zoom in a bit. Go to FLIR, manual gain control. Let's adjust this. Ooh, too bright. That looks fine. Okay, targeting pod of soy. Let's slew it around. Arbitrary point here. Uh, team is four short to make this a point track. And we do this. All we need to do now, kind of like we did with the mark points, is go inboard long greater than 0.5 seconds on the comm switch on the throttle. We can see the uh, XMIT link 16 went to reverse video indicating that I sent that data link to all of my recipients. Okay, now let's take a look at it from the receiving end. Okay, so now let's take a look at receiving a SPI over the data link. And to do that, I'm going to use my flight. I'm going to have them engage a ground target. And when they do that, they're going to create a SPI at that location and send it to me. So, flight, engage. Ground targets. Engage targets of opportunity. And what we see here is a uh, red triangle with a line indicating the speed location. The two indicates that it is uh, aircraft two in our flight. And you'll also see a segmented blue line between two and the speed. Now last, we also have the ability to send radar emitters over the data link as well. And as you might imagine, we're gonna be using the harm targeting system to do that. So as you can see up on the right, I have my HSD. I am in transmitting link 16. And up on the left, I have my HAD. So I'm just waiting for a radar to come online now. It should be any second. Okay, S11 just came online. No drift. So, I'm going to place the cursor over the emitter. Team is four to designate. And just like before now, we're going to go right or inboard on the comm switch to send it to my recipients. Now, if I was receiving it, what I would see is a uh, yellow 11 with a yellow strike through it, indicating that it is sent over the data link. And this is going to be particularly handy, as you might imagine, in multiplayer. Uh, the last thing I'll mention here, too, is if we go to uh, list, miscellaneous, bullseye, and select it, we can also now place our bullseye information on the hat as well. And now, folks, that's a little update of what's coming for the Viper in the next update. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you next time. Thanks.